This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm going to be playing with that Fire King deck yet again, against the same opponent, but he is hopefully going to be playing something different. Um, but basically, I'm going to try my best to actually focus on my play lines and not be a dirtle in terms of how that shit's going to work. Uh, but so, okay, I've got Fire King Island, which I can use to pop this Garunix, which is good. I've got Circle of the Fire Kings. Um, I could do this to pop Garunix. I can add Barong back myself up with Warning and the Ghost Ogre and the Circle, and that should be pretty alright. Uh, he's got no extra deck here, which is interesting. It might be playing, he might be playing some uh, some Monarch deck uh, that might actually cause a problem for me. Well, actually, it won't really be causing a problem because of the fact that um, that the uh, the way that uh, like this deck operates, it summons Garunix every single turn. Uh, so we don't really worry that much about uh, about things like uh, like Domain Monarchs, if that's what he's playing, because of the fact that every turn Garunix wipes the board, so Domain is never going to be live. Uh, so there's that to consider. But anyway, so this Garunix is going to come back, it's going to destroy the Barong. Um, apparently, I could be wrong on this, but apparently Barongs and cards like it, uh, that special summon from hand, they have to be in the hand to register the uh, the destruction of the monster before, so you can't like add Barong off uh, Fire King Island and summon it, is I think the way that works. Uh, because in the last game, I didn't pay too much attention to it, but after I popped a card with Fire King Island in the last video that I did, um, I got a, a prompt for uh, for doing some uh, some cool shenanigans. Okay, so Draconic Diagram. So there's at least a diagram in his deck. I'm going to use Ghost Ogre here on this. I've got Circle of the Fire Kings to recycle the Barong, um, which is fine, which means that I could do that to uh, deal with it. So that's a Domain. So yeah, he's playing Domain Monarchs, but there's a Draconic Diagram and a Pantheism, so he just got the Domain just to get a draw off Pantheism. Okay, so he's playing Monarch True Kings, or Monarch True Draco, I'd assume. Uh, there is some synergy here, because I believe Ignis Heat has the same, yeah, he has the same stats as Monarchs, uh, so there is that to consider. But ultimately, I'm not too sure on the rest of, uh, on the rest of this deck's uh, capable performance. Okay, so he's going to activate the Monarch Stormforth, right? And when he does, uh, after, when he activates Monarch Stormforth, I'm going to circle the Fire Kings, rotate my Garunix out for Barong. In that instance, because in that instance, that'll make sure that my Garunix comes back uh, during the next turn. Uh, I'm going to add Return of the Monarchs to his hand, because I've got the Warning face down. <laughs> Seems fair, right? Uh, so Return of the Monarchs is active, neat. Uh, so, anything else gonna happen here, or are you just going to, okay, you're doing this now, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, to, uh, to get the Garunix set up. The Barong was destroyed the previous turn and is in the graveyard, so if, if he tributes it, I believe during my next standby phase it should still get its trigger because it would've been engraved, or it might be something like, uh, like where it, uh, where it, uh, got moved and does not register itself as the same card that got destroyed. Uh, but regardless, we're going to warning the shit out of that masterpiece. So I know he has an Ignis Heat in his hand. Um, and so, yeah, okay, the Barong got moved, meaning that it will not be able to trigger itself. So that's pretty important to note. But, so what I can do is I can attack here, and then I can use Fire King Island to rotate a card out. Now, he's gotten rid of his Return of the Monarchs, which I'm fine with, uh, because that means that this Solemn Strike could be utilized. Uh, interesting indeed in terms of the gameplay mechanics there going on uh, but so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add I want to add a Garunix just to pop it next turn but Ganasha is just the better card to add because I can normal summon it it'll die and my Barong will come back and then that would be good that'd be good for me in terms of uh, in terms of stuff but I definitely needed that Garunix to like rotate itself back uh, that was the that was the play that needed to happen but so this Garunix will come back uh, the Ganesha, is it Ganesha or Ganesha? A-N-E, so Ganesha. Um, this is such a good card because of what it allows the deck to do. It allows it to keep up keeping monsters on the board, um, and that's like the hugest thing that this deck had a problem with in the past, 
was that you would never keep more than just the Grunix on the board, because every turn Grunix is popping things, but this allows you to bring back other things, so, so that's cool. So he literally has no play. See, this is the problem I have with a deck like this, is that he's playing this deck, um, he's playing a deck like this, and what it does doesn't really do that much for its overall, like, good strat uh, to be used. In the essence of, um, in the essence of what it does and what it allows is, uh, you've got a bunch of stuff that just really bricks in nature. And I know Ignis Heat can tie it together and you've got your ground diagram and shit like that. But at the same time, like, I only used a Ghost Ogre. That's all I did and it broke his entire hand apart in terms of what he was capable of doing. And that's, that's a big kind of problem if that's what your deck has going for it. Uh, but so I'm going to do this, getting the Ganesha. Uh, I can go ahead and thin my deck for another Fire King Island. I've got this Strike Down, which I can utilize. There's a lot of good things happening for me in this game state. But yeah, like I said, like his deck just has the inherent flaw and problem of his deck. It, it, it's the same problem that the regular Monarch dead deck had, right? And to an extent, it's the same problem that True Dracos have, is that you need to draw. Tribute fodder with a tribute summon. Now, Diagram makes this incredibly easy in the true Draco instance, but otherwise, you really don't have a lot going for you as far as uh, as far as far anything else uh, that you're capable of doing, because if you don't draw these two things that coincide with each other, being tribute fodder and uh, and tribute material, or, or uh, tribute summon and tribute fodder, rather, then you end up with all this different shit that just doesn't actually work that well. So. Here comes the Prime Monarch. He had a tenacity. He drew a Monarch that was able to, you know, correct his hand. He's setting that and summoning Ignis Heat. So there's that bit of synergy that happens as well. You're able to send the Returns, the Marches, and the Prime Monarch to Grave to do that. And he's killing the Barong so that the Barong uh, doesn't get destroyed at the end of the turn and uh, and float uh, for another card for me. So that's smart. Uh, but at the same time, like, this turn, he's not really going to be getting much because... I'm going to be able to just use this Garunix and attack over his uh, his um, his Ignis Heat. And so I'm just looping Garunix now because I've got two established. So every turn something is going to die. Um, so he does play these cards. And now the thing is I can just Solemn Strike him here and then that's just game. Uh, because I will be able to search for... Well, no, it's not game because I've got to deal with the, uh, the Prime Monarch that's in his graveyard. So he might be able to out-resource me on this. Uh, in terms of how this game state might end up going. So that might actually be something that's real. Uh, real as shit. Uh, I probably should have actually kept this in retrospect. I probably should have used the Ash on it. Uh, but regardless, we're just going to attack here, force the Prime out of his grave, uh, and then we're going to kill it. Uh, so it's going to start taking resources out of his graveyard, stuff like that. Like, he's, he's still going to draw Tribute Summons, that's the thing. But he has a good amount of them in his deck because he's got Terraforming Diagram and shit like that. But at the same time, it doesn't seem like it's a card like choice that would work out too well in the long haul, in the long term, in the long run. Uh, but that's just my opinion on the matter. But I can get Ganesha here, and that would allow me to float back the uh, the Barong again, uh, or I could just start getting the Barongs out of deck. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do the uh, Barong out of deck because I can normal summon the Barong, it'll die, and it'll guarantee me a search. Now see, this Barong is is asking him to trigger. That's silly. Like, the first time, it didn't ask to trigger. And now this time, it is. That's stupid. Why is it only doing it half the time? I'm very confused on this subject. Because literally, first turn, uh, or the first time that I popped up one off the board to search, it didn't do it? Or it did it in the last game? I don't know. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my collective mind and collective thought process. So we'll just go with that. But both of these get to trigger now, uh, which is the most interesting thing about this. Um, is that that dies, and now this comes out. <laughs> um, I wish that this effect was optional, honestly. I wish that it was optional so you could, like, keep two on the board, and that would be the coolest shit in the world. Uh, but Ganesha kind of fills that role because of the fact that you could just have Ganesha on the board, uh, and it would be able to bring back one of them as well. So there's that. There is, there's the little bit of, uh, a little bit of thing that allows you to get there. But so I've got Ghost Ash, and Ghost Ash can negate... Um, like, Erebus and shit. That's cool. Uh, that's cool as fuck. Uh, but he does have an Erebus in his hand, which I know that he revealed. He's got this return. Now, what other cards do I know of that's in his hand? 
I'm not too terribly sure, but I know he has this Prime Monarch engraved that's live. And so, uh, okay, he's got just another Ignis Heat. Okay, um, that's fine. I'm okay with dealing with Ignis Heat. Uh, this is... Ooh, ooh, this card's great. This means I just kill him this turn, guaranteed. Um, now, I'm going to activate... I have to activate some effect, uh, basically, uh, because I want to get my Barong Search. Uh, but, so I'll just Ghost Ash this. Um, <laughs> I'll just Ghost Ash it, mate. It's all right. Um, so this will get summoned. This will blow up the board. And so then I'll be able to use uh, Circle of the Fire Kings on the Ganesha that I'm about to search off this Barong. And that would be that, um, in terms of how that can function. Uh, actually, I'm going to get this, because I can use Fire King Island to search the other Ganesha. <laughs> uh, and then we'll normal summon that. And that way, we've still got as many Looping Garunixes as Poss. Uh, that's that's the key that we want here, is we want the Looping Garunixes. Um, and so this will be able to bring back a card. This will bring back a card. We'll just, we'll just be cooking with all sorts of gas. Uh, but so we're just slowly whittling him down and out of this game is what we're doing. Now he has the Prime Monarch Engrave, which he can use to bring that back, uh, but the Garunix will just attack. Um, so yeah, we'll replay this. We'll attack that. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this because it's game if I if it's game if I just attack with this straight up. So I'm just going to do this now. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to bring back another Garunix and another uh, I'm going to bring back all three Garunix. This is we're just we're going for style points here. We've got the game sewn up. Uh, so we're going to we're going to put all three Garunixes on the field, because this is something that's like never been possible in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! beforehand, was having all three Garunixes on your field at the same time. So we're going for style points to end the game out there. So anyway, this is an interesting deck. Uh, this uh, this Monarch True Draco thing, I think it has some inherent flaws. Uh, that really is the fact that, as I addressed a little bit earlier, I think it has the inherent flaws of it kind of doesn't solve the problem that both decks independently have, but then, in turn, compounds those problems by making the decks try to work together. It doesn't solve any problems, and it doesn't really make anything worse in terms of their own individual problems, but putting them together makes sort of a bigger, pro glaring, like, problematic solution in turn, and what I, is what I think about that. But anyway, this is the same deck that I played in the previous video, because I haven't had time to look at anyone's suggestions or anything if they even happened on the previous video, because I'm filming these all in bulk at one time. So, anyway, if you have any suggestions or whatnot for the deck, then definitely leave them in the comments down below, and I would love to potentially see some good ones. So there is that. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, as I've already said. Links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel and me as a content creator directly, and you really like the stuff that I do, then definitely go check out the Patreon. There's some rewards in certain rewards tiers that you might be interested in, like getting access to my private Discord server, which is where Connor Moto came from, and where everybody that I play for these dual videos that I've been playing for the past m few months have come from. If you want to play me for dual videos, if you want to chat with me on a 24-7 basis whenever I have access to a computer or phone, then definitely check that out if you're interested. But other than that, if you just want to support the channel's growth, a dollar is something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic, still fantastic way to show your support for something that you like, and it helps some future projects I've got in the works come into fruition a bit sooner than they would have normally so there's definitely that but if you like this video give it a thumbs up punch that like button do all that sort of nonsense if you're new here and liked what you saw then maybe consider subscribing as well to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh content that I try to produce on a regular basis but other than that again that is it for this video thanks for watching as always again guys as usual thanks for your time and take care I will see you in the next video